All right. So uh, this is we ended up on this one last time. I just want to check something. Okay, uh, all righty, so let's move on here. And uh, Robert, what do you think of uh, this case? All right, so we have a 15-year-old female, palpable mass, right arm, uh, past medical history, 10 years ago had a mass excision at the same site. site. Mm, I don't necessarily see a whole lot going on here. Okay. Yeah, it, it, it looks like the shoulder area. Yeah, here looking at the uh, right shoulder uh, within the deltoid musculature, it looks like there's some signal abnormality, uh, some enhancement on the T1 post imaging there. Uh, yeah, some. Yeah. Okay, so what do you think's going on here? Uh, not entirely sure. Just looks like some brisk enhancement, some abnormal signal abnormality there. Yeah, it looks like it's looks like it may be involving the muscle, the deltoid, but also yeah. extending out into the subcutaneous fat. Hi, I'm lecturing. And uh, this was. Uh, you know, I guess we can go back here. It's very inhomogeneous, inhomogeneous enhancement, obviously not straight benign, uh, something that would have to be further evaluated. The margins are not all completely distinct. It may be actually going through soft tissue planes. Uh, so this was biopsied, and it was intravascular papillary endothelial hyperplasia. So this was another vascular lesions, also called a Mason's mas uh, tumor, and uh, uh, so, but a very vascular lesion, not very common. Okay, uh, Elior. Okay, 68 year old male, left, left hand mass. Um, you're right, so at the base of the fourth and fifth digit, we see a in this rounded soft yeah, tissue mass. You can even see it on plane films, yeah. Uh, I'm sure you want an MR. There's the MR. Sure. Yeah. So on the uh, so we have PD fat set the top left, um, right. This is probably PD fat set. That's probably T1 weighted set post. I think, and this is probably a T1. Okay. So we have assuming contrast enhancement. Yeah, in that contrast like study, the vessels there. are enhancing here. Yeah, yeah, and it looks yeah. pretty well circumscribed. It's doesn't involve the underlying structures. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, we're talking about vascular lesions. Uh, okay, so it's relatively sharply defined um, on some images, but not on others. It's very inhomogeneous. Mm -hmm. uh, Assuming this is post contrast, there are, it looks like there are focal areas that may enhance, but other areas that don't. So obviously, this is not a benign, clearly benign lesion, and therefore you'd have to go with further evaluation. Right. And this ended up being an angiomyoma. Forty-one-year-old female, palpable mass. So it looks like uh, some some fly, huh? Uh, looks like within the vastus lateralis muscle, we have this circumscribed mass. Is it closely associated with that vessel adjacent to it? And uh, doesn't encase it. Yeah, but it is abuts the 
uh, what are the medial aspect of it. Yeah, okay. it's like yeah, high signal on T2 and possibly advancing. Yeah. So they're, they're clearly internal characteristics on the T1, so it's a solid mass. Yeah. They're, there are multiple areas of different signal intensity on the T2, so it's a heterogeneous type mass. Uh, we don't have a T1 fat set pre, but so we don't know whether there's enhancement or not, but we can see that it is inhomogeneous on the post-contrast yeah. study. Yeah, it looks like uh, predominantly hypoechoic here. Yeah, and kind of in case you run 180 degrees of that adjacent vessel. Exactly sure what this is. So it's next to the vessel, but it doesn't look like there's really a lot of flow no. inside the lesion itself. So what are your thoughts? Uh, I don't know, some sort of vessel. Well, you can look at it if you want. <laughs> this is what it looks like. And it's turned out to be a venous Laumau sarcoma. Okay. So let's move on to the parasitic type lesions. Uh, Robert. All right, so here we're looking at a finger and at the uh, distal aspect of the finger, there is a mass that looks like it's uh, well circumscribed at hypo -inten or intermediate intensity on uh, T1 weighted imaging. And bright on T2. Mm -hmm. So what's your diagnosis? I think it's a little too distal to be a giant cell tumor, and uh, I think the other thing I'd consider is like a glomus tumor, maybe? Yeah, so this is a pretty classic glomus tumor. Classic location, uh, uniform and signal, very sharply defined around the edges. Un usually it's uniform and, and uh, signal intensity, and, and uh, it erodes the bone. This is a classic glomus tumor. Now, these can be painful. You try to pick them up earlier before you have so much bone destruction, but this is a classic globus tumor. And, and these, are very, these are very painful, um, but maybe if you get to a certain size, the pain is not as bad. Okay. But I'm looking at this one, and, 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 and my pain is nothing. Hmm. These are uh, extremely painful. You want to get rid of them as soon as you can. Okay, thanks. So and in this case, uh, I don't know, I probably would amputate. Okay. So uh, we can go in and now look at the nail bed area. And the, here you can see that you have the nail plate overlying the nail bed. Underneath that, you have the subungual space where you can get some subungual lesions. The germinal matrix is back here where the plate is formed, the distal phalanx, and then here we can see the pad. And that, uh, you know, if you want to look for the type of lesions, you can get lesions in the subungual area. Can you guys still hear me? Yes. Good. Yeah. Uh, so in the well, I can. Yeah, good. Thank you. So we can solid tumors. We can see glomus tumors from the subungual area, exostoses. So you get soft tissue chondromas, keratoxanthomas, hemangiomas, fibromaxomas, and cystic lesions. You can also get epidermal cysts and mucoid cysts in this particular area. So they're not all glomus tumors, but the first thing that that I think of typically is a glomus tumor when it's in that location. There's a mistake in uh, one of those. Okay, uh, which one? The second subungal exotosis. It's yeah. exostosis. Oh, thank you. Should be an S there. Okay, I'll go back and get that. Thank you, John. I appreciate that. So these are the benign tum tumors. You can also get malignant tumors, which include squamous cell carcinoma and melanoma. A 32-year-old man, pain for a year. Mm. 
assuming we're looking at the digits here. I'm not seeing too much. Okay. Uh, along the lateral musculature, plantar at musculature, we see this uh, muscle in, or mass involving the, the the muscles surrounding the tendons. It could be contrast. Kind of has it regularly. We saw other lesions that have looked like this. You know, one which was a fibrous lesion. Uh, and then you can see that there's little speculation of the margins, so it looks a little bit infiltrative, uh, but the margins are still relatively well defined. So, are you going to pass it off or what? No, no. I, I agree. I think this is a lesion that needs to be evaluated. So, so they uh, operated on it and. Uh, they found a lesion like this with a lot of little small cells, and this turned out also to be a glomus tumor. Hmm. So there are mesenchymal uh, neoplasms composed of cells that closely resemble smooth muscle cells or uh, cells of the normal glomus body. And uh, uh, you know they can be benign or malignant. Uh, this happened to be a a malignant lesion, and they're really of on, on, uh, you know, uncertain. So, so this uh, in this area, the, the subungual regions, ones that I've always heard of, are typically considered to be benign, uh, but the other locations, uh, they can be malignant, and they need to be uh, treated. Well, well, so, that, the one we saw was very hypercellular. Yeah. Right. So this was excised and treated. Uh, okay, uh, Tayson. All right, so looking at the sagittal MR images of the knee uh, posteriorly to the distal femoral metaphysis there, see this um, intermediate signal on T1 and high signal on T2 lesion there. Um, in this location, do you think of maybe a cortical desmoid? Okay, could, uh, could be cortical desmoid. This is interesting here is that it looks like the cortex is intact here. This looks like it's mostly a soft tissue lesion. Uh -huh. Here it almost looks like you have a tear of the, uh, of the lateral head of the gastrocnemius tendon. But the margins are a little bit odd, but I guess this this could be a tear, but it looks like there's some extension up here. If we go to the uh, coronal images, what do you think here? Um, yeah, kind of diffusely low signal on the T1, high signal on the fluid sensitive T2. Yeah. It just and maybe you could have some edema and a tear, but this off, looks awfully speculated here. Okay. And the margins are very indistinct, but maybe it's edema. But this doesn't look like the, the typical lesions we have here. It's not really a, 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 a traction injury to the bone, like we see a tug lesion, which we see all the time here. What other soft tissue masses do we commonly see here? Uh, you could get paraseal... Sarcoma. Yeah, yeah, there, there, there are periosteal and paraosteal lesions here, uh, which can be in the malignant category. So, uh, you know, this particular lesion was passed off uh, somewhere else as being a, uh, a high-grade partial tear. Uh, <clears throat> it ended up becoming a medical legal case, and uh, after. Uh, uh, a couple of months later, it was finally biopsies and, and ended up being a malignant hemangioendothelioma. Go on to mm -hmm. John. I was trying to figure out what muscle that was. Well, I think it's really coming in the area of the tendon of the uh, origin of the lateral head of the gast of the uh, gastrocnemius. I think this is the gastrocnemius muscle here. That's, that's, a, that's a little high, but yeah. 
so that the gastroc attaches right here on the metaphysis. I mean, the tumor grew from the top of. Okay. Okay. Chondroosseous lesions. Uh, Robert. All right, so we have a 39-year-old male, slow-growing right ankle mass. I had an operation due to the ankle mass three years ago. Uh, and there's a previous outside MR from three years ago. Uh, medial aspect of the ankle looks like there's this lobulated uh, T1 intermediate and fat sat bright lesion there. That's yeah. pretty well-defined borders, but... Uh... Okay, so they looked at the lesion... This, this was biopsied three years ago, and they called it a chondroma. Uh, now the patient came back, and here are plain films three years after the surgery. Um, okay, so now it looks like there's some, at least some soft tissue thickening back there, so I definitely want to get an MR and take a look at that. An MR? <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, so now there's, yeah. A more infiltrative looking mass there, some scalloping of the bone, and doesn't look good. Yeah, some peripheral, you can see enhancement. Some peripheral enhancement, enhancement in the soft tissues, but the main lesion itself is not enhancing. And this was uh, curtaged out, and this was considered a grade one chondrosarcoma at this stage and was treated as a malignant lesion. Okay, we have an 18 year old female left foot mass. Uh, yeah, the heel pad, is there a mass there? Okay, on the T1, top left looks low signal, similar to muscle. Uh, not, there's some indistinct margins. Uh, so the PD fat side in the middle, some edema surrounding that. Uh, yeah, just very heterogeneous, indistinct margin. Yeah, so it's yeah, it's distinct, you know. It's I, I think this is this doesn't look like a typical pressure lesion, which we can see in this location. This really looks like it's more of a mass, and obviously it's. Uh, well, we can't clearly say that this is a known benign type lesion, so it has to be worked up. Uh, and uh, here it is. And so this ended up being an extra skeletal chondroma. They tend to occur around the hands and feet, around tendons. Uh, usually they have more of a cartilage type appearance than this had, but the, this one was low signal because it had a lot of calcium in it. And uh, you can also get cystic changes within these. So extraskeletal chondromas are relatively rare. Yeah, that, that's like walking on a marble. <laughs> yeah, right. Right. All right. Okay. Forty-year-old female, palpable mass, right inguinal region for eleven years, enlarging recently. That's not a hernia. <laughs> yeah, so there's this. Uh, Looks like overall wall surface spread, but a lot of other margins to this uh, anterior thigh mass. Um, some areas of low signal internally, but overall high signal on the T2. Yeah, with all these kind of little squiggly low signal lines yeah. in it, but other areas that are yeah. more yeah. linear, maybe flow boys, maybe some vessels, maybe. Uh, there are calcified areas. Here's the uh, the uh, arterial and venous phase of the angiogram. Is that the feeder? Yeah, I think we have kind of feeders coming down here, and then here we can see uh, a compression of the vein here with what looks like displacement of vessels around this mass. And uh, this ended up being an extra skeletal mesenchymal chondrosarcoma. So another uncommon type malignant uh, chondroid lesion in the soft tissues. Robert. 
Okay, so we have a 68 year old female shoulder mass excision at a local clinic two weeks ago. Question <laughs> MFH uh, here. I don't really see a whole lot on the radiographs or the other scan. Yeah. And here on the MRI, it looks like in the posterior deltoid on the top left imaging, there's some increased signal there. Uh, kind of infiltrative signal. It doesn't look like a discrete lesion. Um, yeah, remember, this is post-op. The patient had an excision surgery here two weeks ago. Right. right. So this may all, may all be post-operative edema and whatnot. But, uh, and on the bottom left, it looks like there's a bright lesion, kind of triceps region. Okay. And there's the ultrasound of that lesion. Ultrasound, there's an ovoid lesion there. It's, you know, hypoechoic, uh, pretty well circumscribed. There's the needle for the biopsy. Okay. And this was an extraskeletal osteosarcoma. Jeez. Okay. And this, this is two months later. Pretty rapid growth. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, let's talk a little bit about nerves. We've talked before about the kind of the anatomy of a nerve. You have the epineurium around the uh, the nerve itself. Uh, then inside that you have different bundles, which are uh, of of uh, of, uh, of axons, which are incorporated in a sheath called the perineurium. You have veins and arteries in the middle. And then uh, around each axon, you have an endoneurium, and then you have a myelin sheath around that, and then finally the axon in the middle. So, Elio, are you next? Mm -hmm. So, uh, this looks like an eyeball stuck in the calf. <laughs> right, it seems to be associated with the uh, or splitting that nerve. Okay, so it looks like a nerve coming in here with a nerve sheet, mm -hmm. and then right here, here we can see the popliteal vessels, and here's the nerve which is markedly thickened, and then we have this big thing in it, mm -hmm. and this was a perineural cyst involving the nerve. All right, fifty-eight-year-old female peroneal nerve palsy. Assist uh, with through transmission there. Okay, so again, ultrasound looks like a big cystic collections here. A lot of uh, uh, shine through here. Uh, let's go to the MR scan, okay? Yeah. Uh, this is another kind of a mini. I think I've seen two or three of these in practice. Some. Sort of the long, long, long looking. Uh, so it looks very cystic, but then we can see that it looks like it's associated with this structure, which happens to be the tibial nerve coming down here. And here we can see it around here. If we go to the axial images up high, we can see the nerve. Then we come down here where we have this fluid collection. Any idea what this might be? Yeah. Okay. And so they went to surgery on this particular case. And here's what happened at surgery. And this is just uh, all fluid that's in the nerve sheets tracking up the, the, uh, the nerve. And this is a, a ganglion cyst that goes into the tibial nerve. And they can go all the way up to the sciatic nerve. Mm -hmm. And uh, these typically uh, start out around the knee. They start out around the uh, proximal tibial fibular joint where fluid extends into the uh, perineal nerve, tracks up in, in the nerve sheath proximally in the leg, compresses the nerve leading to uh, a neuropathy. And depending on how far it goes and which part of the nerves 
it affects, it can uh, affect, uh, you know, different distal structures. If it's just a perineal nerve, you'll get a foot drop and so forth. But these are crazy. They, they're, this basically is tracking of uh, 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 a synovial cyst coming from the proximal tibial fibular joint up the end of the nerve. So they're pretty rare, though I've seen a few in practice, and they're just kind of ant minis. You just follow them tracking up the nerve. Okay. Robert. All right. So here we're looking at the foot, and in the third intermetatarsal space, there's a stir bright lesion. Pretty classic location for a neuroma, but um, yeah, help? Right. yeah, for sure. So here it definitely looks like a neuroma, you know, the dumbbell shaped, and that's the other like side. <laughs> so it looks like there's bilateral mm -hmm. neuromas, yeah. Yep, John. And these can often have fluid in the intermetatarsal bursa adjacent to the Morton's neuroma. That's pretty common. The Morton's neuroma tend to be more on the plantar aspect and can extend into the subcutaneous fat down here. But these are kind of classic Morton's neuromas. And these are thought to be traumatic injury to the nerves uh, uh, going in between the metatarsal, uh, distal metatarsal heads. Uh, and it's traumatic injury, which then produces these neuromas, typically seen in women who wear high heel shoes. I think the classic uh, Morton's is between the second and third um, metatarsals. Um, the, the others are just neuromas. Oh, okay. Uh, so you'd, you'd say you call it Morton's neuroma only if it's in the in between the second and third. Uh, yeah, I think so. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah, I remember it. Uh, I think from it, about fifty years ago. Yeah, well, m maybe that's where it was first described. Uh, but I think the term Morton's neuroma now, in general use, describes any uh, any nerve uh, masses, benign nerve masses like this that are. Painful yeah, I, I, in between I, I, the toes. I know, John. I was just giving a little history. Good. I appreciate it. I like that history. Okay. Okay, so here, looking in the uh, posterior fossa, we see in the region of the nerve, there's thickening of that tibial nerve. Okay, there. This is thickened. That's yeah. thickened. Here we can see this structure is very thickened. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, if we go farther down, this is what we see. I have a question. Do you are are you asking a question, John? Well, I'm showing him a case, and he's supposed to come up with a differential diagnosis. Okay. Well, what I want to do is ask who, who, who will take care of this case <laughs> after you're finished. Okay, good. We see atrophy of the... Uh, the so, you, so you see a lot of muscle atrophy, fatty atrophy yeah. of the muscles, which are really the, the calf, the flexor muscles. Mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> So, uh, uh, so thickened nerves, so like, yeah, and, like and, a... and yeah, I feel like some of the nerves, if you go here, aren't, aren't thickened, but these are so, but if you see generally thickened nerves peripherally, what diseases do you think about? The median nerve, there's like a hematoma that we saw okay. that. Okay. You know, it's just a thickened nerve. Um, well, let's just say, say, for instance, all the nerves of the lower extremities are thickened. That's not the case here, but what would you there, think about? Is there Charcot-Marie Tooth? Yeah, Charcot-Marie Tooth, which turns out to be a bunch of different diseases that are all 
determined by gen changes in certain genetic lo lo loci, mm -hmm. but but they they tend to present with some variations depending upon the exact genetic uh, mutation that's that's involved. With it. we'll we'll get to that sometime. I don't know where we got to that. Yeah, that this they they finally decided there was it, it had the same appearances of fibrolipomatosis, of a hematoma that you can see in the median nerve of the of the wrist, uh, but this was one in the. Uh, in the leg, so it's it's kind of a similar pathology, but I've I've never heard of it in the leg before, and it produced. But clearly, it's an abnormal nerve, which is what you need to go. No, it's involving probably it goes up to the, if I remember, up from the sciatic nerve down, and uh, involving the peripheral ones, and then you can see the denervation changes of the more distal muscles. Uh, I would call an or orthopedic. Uh, oncology surgeon, uh, n not a neurosurgeon. That, that, that. Okay, good. Uh, ne uh, neurosurgeons just don't get any experience in this stuff. Okay. All right, so he's uh, four legs. Here it is. Uh... Prescribed MAT here, low signal on T1 and high signal on T2. Or fluid sensitive seasons. Uh, Looks like you yeah, guys associated with the therapy uh, treatment. Okay, and here we can see it here in axial images. And here. And you're right, this was a schwannoma. Okay. Robert? Okay, so we have a 47-year-old female with a right thigh mass for three months. It's a little subtle here, but we can see it. All right, in that right thigh, there's a large mass. Um, it's uh, iso-intense on T1 to muscle, and then on the T2, it looks heterogeneously bright with some internal low-signal foci there. And, uh, and, and do you believe the history? And, uh, I think it's been there a lot longer than. <laughs> maybe, maybe three years. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, it looks similar on the coronal imaging. Yeah, so three months. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and here's a PET scan. It does look like there's some uptake there, kind of. Okay. So uh, would you just ignore it or would you work it out? Uh, I would want to work that up for sure. Okay. So they did a, a first an ultrasound biopsy, and then they did an excisional biopsy. And this is what it looked like in the OR. And this was the mass removed. And if you start sectioning it, this is what it looks like. So mm -hmm. histology like this. So what's your, what are your thoughts? Uh, so it looks like there's some fat sort of characteristics in there but it's not not very homogeneous so. yeah not very homogeneous at all I'll come back here and you can see that it's very unhomogeneous on the mr as well as opposed to that last the last case we had and this turns out to be a giant schwannoma oh, when these get really large which they can uh, they start necrosing in, uh, inside and then you could get a lot of inhomogeneity within them Forty-three-year-old man with a buttock mass. Um, yeah, this this mass looks more intramuscular compared to the prior. It's uh, well circumscribed, heterogeneous signal. Um, yeah, on the, on the T one it looks pretty homogeneous. It looks on the uh, water sensitive sequence in the middle. There's yeah, pretty homogeneous internally. Old, old, old structures. And then on the post contrast, there's some in homo a lot more inhomogeneous signal. Mm -hmm. Okay. Not really any flow on the ultrasound. Mm -hmm. And this turned out to be a neural lymoma, a b large benign uh, nerve tumor. Okay. All right. Okay. Let's see now lower back pain for one year um, 
Like there's this uh, heterogeneous yeah, so, so we, we have compression of the vertebra here, which we can see here. Yeah. And we've got this big mass. And then you bury a regular tangle of that little on that arm. And very ugly appearance on the cut specimen. And you have some yeah, which are going through the skull. Yeah. Not a good idea. It's not something you'd want. And this was a paraganglioma. Okay, Robert, thigh mass. So we have another thigh mass. Uh, looks like there's a you know, large mass in the thigh. It's bright on stir. Um, yeah, so we have some pre and post imaging, and it looks like it enhances. Um, yeah. Looks like it's a. It's all in the anterior compartment of the leg there. Some infiltrative components to it, but uh, not entirely sure what it is. <laughs> so this was a plexiform neurofibroma. They can look very inhomogeneous, they can be large, almost look very infiltrative. Uh, and sure. uh, fortunately, most of the neurofibromas that, that I've seen have been more discreet than this, uh, with multiple masses, often like in a great like structure along a nerve, or just isolated. But the flexform type can be much more infiltrative in its appearance extending through the nerves that go into the muscles. Okay, 53. Mm -hmm. like that is why I don't like oncologic surgery. Yeah, <laughs> right. A uh, 53-year-old right foot pain and swelling for 10 days after incisional biopsy at a local clinic. Right foot dorsum mass. Five centimeters in diameter, soft, fixed, no tenderness. Okay. Uh, so we have this mass involving the forefoot, heterogeneous on T2, mostly dark on T1, with contrast enhancement, uh, I assume. Yeah, again, we don't have a T1 FETS at three, mm -hmm. but this is certainly looks very intense. Yeah. Uh, yeah, soft soft tissues of the dorsum, the foot doesn't see, it goes but in the intermetatarsal space doesn't look like it's affecting the bone, but you know, just infiltrative. I'd be worried worried about it. Yeah, very homogeneous. Flow, yep, internal vascularity. Here is the uh, spine. Spine, okay. Uh, spine of this, I think. Okay, yeah. The vertebral body looks like it's uh, got this cleft in it. Yeah, yeah, spine of bifida. There, Little masses along the nerves. Yeah. yeah. It's probably too big, too. Hmm. So, can these be neurofibromas? We're in the neurofibroma section. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, that's neurofibromatosis, which I see much more commonly than the plexiform type. Well, uh... I, I made a diagnosis to myself. How about that? You make good diagnoses all the time. Most of the stuff I did was on the, on the legs. Mm. Yeah. So people looked at the... These. And most of these benign neurotumors kind of have a target sign, which means that on typically a T2 or PD fat set images, the periphery is brighter and then there's kind of a, a smudgy appearance to the central part. It's a little bit lower in signal intensity. 
kind of called the target sign, and that's kind of kind of common in these benign peripheral nerve tumors. Jason? 25-year-old female enlarging mass. Uh, this mass has been formed in subcutaneous tissues of the thigh here. Um, but yeah, it's usually high signal and fluid sensitive sequences. Isotensor, mildly hypertensive muscle there. On T1. So, internal vascularity. Almost, but not quite. Looks like filariasis that we've seen in previous lectures, but not not, not quite the same. This looks like much more uniform. And, and this turned out to be... Uh, neurofibromatosis and a diffuse fibroma. And in this case, they are worried about malignant peripheral nerve sheath tumors, which I think are, are pretty rare. Uh, <clears throat> but the pathology wasn't definitive, and I don't know what the follow-up was. No, that's kind of unusual to have it that close to the skin and nowhere else. Yeah, well, I don't know. It might be other places... Besides here, this is all we know. Yeah, well, yeah. well, yeah, we only have this. Yeah. So neurofibromatosis, you can have localized neurofibroma, you can have plexiform fibromas, like we saw, uh, which gives us more of a diffuse, long segment, can extend into the surrounding fat, or you can have diffuse fibroma, all, uh, multiple fibromas. Plexiform fibroma can be kind of infiltrated, like the last one we saw, or you can just see a massive amount of uh, neurofibroma like we're seeing here in plexiform neurofibromatosis. And this is more the diffuse form of plexiform neurofibromatosis, uh, which it looks like an infiltrated, more like a mass, sometimes could even look a little bit like a possible in infection. So the big thing is to try to differentiate benign from malignant on these. And... Uh, Size is somewhat helpful, though plexiform neurofibroma that are benign can be very large, but if, if it's over five centimeters, you have to be worried. If you give contrast, you get peripheral enhancement. That's typically a sign of malignancy. The more heterogeneous the signal on T1, the worse the prognosis. If you have perilesional edema, that's a pretty good sign that you're, you're dealing with a malignant lesion, not a benign lesion. And if you have cystic breakdown, uh, uh, that, that's a problem that we've already seen in those uh, very large schwannomas. You, you commonly will get cystic breakdown, uh, which are not malignant. But there are a lot of other benign lesions of nerves besides what we've talked about so forth. I won't go through all of these, uh, but, uh, uh, you know, uh, most of the time what we see are going to be uh, neurofibroma and someone who already has a diagnosis of neurofibromatosis, or you'll see a peripheral mass that's pretty characteristic of a benign uh, peripheral uh, nerve sheath tumor. Uh, other lesions, you then just have to work them up. And we've already seen ganglions in the nerve, and so forth. I don't know. Who's next? Okay. I can take it. Leave it to me. Okay, go for it, Robert. All right, so we have a 50 year, 54 year old female with pain and swelling for eight months. And then posterior aspect of the leg, uh, there's a you know, well circumscribed mass back there. ISO intense on T1 and bright on the uh, fat set imaging there. Okay. Here it looks like it's involving some of the musculature there as well. Yeah, but here it's very inhomogeneous, kind of has some septa, very lobulated appearance. But down here, it's almost looking a little bit infiltrative as you get more distally uh, in this. Uh, so are you concerned about it? What, what, what are your thoughts here? How would you? Uh, yeah, I'm concerned. I'm not entirely sure what it is, to be honest. 
Okay. This is a sarcoma of a tibial of the tibial nerve. Yeah, I have yeah, a little concern about it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, too bad they couldn't pick it up early. And though. the patient is more concerned about it than us, all of us. Yeah. Well, it's funny when you see something like this, you wonder why the patients waited so long to get it evaluated. So. Well, we waited for that five centimeters you were talking about, John. Yeah. Right. Okay, 23 year old female aggravating calf swelling for several weeks. Um, so, so, you know, I, 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 excuse me a second. I think some people are afraid that they have cancer and that they just don't, they try to ignore it uh, until things get so bad that they just decide that they better, better have it taken care of. You mean answer like, or not? You mean like me? Um, like what? Oh no, I'm not me? talking about you, John. <laughs> okay. you, you wouldn't do anything like that. Okay, so here, right? We have this mass in the posterior oh. leg. Uh, is I don't. Doesn't look like it's involving the muscle. It's pushing the muscle out of the way. Maybe. Uh, it's heterogeneous. Uh, yeah, it's extending inferiorly. Very indistinct margins. And Dr. Sue would be happy to call this a fat split sign. Because maybe you're right. Maybe it's in between the soleus and the gastrocnemius here. Uh, Benign or malignant? I, yeah, I'd be worried about something malignant. Yeah, I think you got to be worried about something like this, right? It's very inhomogeneous. Even though margins are relatively sharp, it's very inhomogeneous. It has cystic changes we have to worry about. Maybe it's grown to the point where it's outgrown its vascular supply and you have necrosis in it. So I think I would be wor very worried about this lesion. Very different signal intensities within the lesion itself. And this is a hemorrhagic malignant peripheral sheath tumor. So this is a malignant tumor. Yeah, it is definitely five, more than five centimeters. Yeah, and it's very large, right. Okay, let's talk about Mira and, uh, and uh, well, disease of uh, immune cell origin. All right. 42 year old female, palpable chest, small mass for one month. Uh, we have this hypothalamus mass located in deep to the hypothalamus muscle, I'm guessing. A lot of internal vascularity. Yeah, um, looks like it's high so intense to muscle on T1. And Okay, so it says, yeah. So it's just a mass, and would you be worried about it? Uh, I would. Yeah, I would be too. Yeah, just basically it's hard until it's very yeah. irregular. So uh, this was Castleman's disease. And if you guys remember Castleman's disease, so it's, uh, it's basically lymphoid hyperplasia. Uh, and you get, uh, in this case, a lot, they had a lot of plasma cells within it. And, uh, it's typical, it's generally, and we get a lot of inflammatory disease associated with it. It's usually in the thorax, but can be elsewhere, but it's really a, a mass of, uh, abnormal lymph nodes that can look very aggressive. It needs to obviously be fully evaluated. All right, so we have a 75 year old female looking at the posterior aspect of the knee. Uh, there's a kind of yeah, yeah, posterior. posterior posterior to the knee, right? Right. Uh, and looking there, there's that bright structure that's posterior to the tibial or sorry, the uh, popliteal artery. 
Yeah, it looks like it extends both inferiorly and superiorly. Yeah. Looks like there's some increased flow yeah. there. Yeah, a little bit. So what sits back here? Well, you know, the, the tibial nerve sits back in this location, but mm -hmm. so do a lot of other structures. Uh, this turned out to be neural lymphomatosis. So this was lymphoma involving the uh, tibial nerve. A 13-year-old male, multiple palpable masses on both calves. Oops, sorry. Uh, yeah, very hypocoic mass. Like fusiform mm -hmm. longitudinally there. There we can see a few little vessels in it, but okay. not, not a lot. Mm -hmm. MR scan. Uh, yeah, so lots of small regions of irregularity, little yeah, contrast enhancement in the lower left, small regions of contrast enhancement um, within the muscles. Uh, hmm. Yeah, really everywhere. A big mass in the anterior mediastinum. Uh, huh. So, well, this is kind of crazy. This turned out to be lymphoblastic lymphoma in the mediastinum. In a calf, it turned out to be chronic inflammatory lesions in that and an abscess. Okay. Probably due to the immunodeficiency of the patient, but this was lymphoma. All right. 81-year-old male, left upper arm mass for two months. Uh, five months ago, I had a one centimeter mass that was sized, doubled in size, 10 days. Um, doesn't look good. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, some soft tissue prominence there, lateral elbow. Very homogeneously low signal on T1. That intermediate signal with the focus of high signal there on uh, maybe it's a focus of enhancement there in the Yeah, maybe. I don't know, recurring and uh rapidly enlarging, I'd be worried about it. Okay. Very large lobular mass coming off of the left kidney. Areas of necrosis. And this was all lymphoma. And the excisional biopsy. Uh, why don't we stop here and we'll pick up dermatologic lesions. Uh, on Monday, and kind of finish up the soft uh, the review of soft tissue tumors. Later. Have, a, have a great weekend, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, later in the year, we can decide what we want to do. But uh, if you want to go into more detailed tumors, I've got a lot more tumors uh, and individual body parts. Basically, all the joints I have a lot of tumors so separate, but. Uh, Usually we just do uh, kind of this review talk on tumors and not spend the time to go into more detail of tumors and the, the different anatomic body parts of the musculoskeletal system. But we can talk about that later. Okay, thanks, everyone. Thank you. Take care, everybody. You too. Thank you.